Welcome to another episode of the Kinseed series, and this is actually Editor Knox here because the original recording of this episode, the audio is very messed up. It's very crackly, staticky. I don't know why. I don't know what caused it. Um, hopefully this one is not also doing that. But today we're going to be looking at the Hagen Slash update. This is something that is on the experimental branch, so it's not out on the main branch quite yet. Should be soon though, I bet. Also, since I got sassed for this the last time I did it, there's gonna be a lot of reading at the first half of this episode, so if you don't want all the reading, you're gonna have to skip it. <laughs> so, uh, update. It is time to sharpen your blades, craft your items, and pack a spare pair of underpants. The dark forest of simple wood awaits with many dangers and enticing rewards. So what can you expect? A fresh new combat system that feels better than warm socks on a winter's morning. Reputation points that, that for your shop that can turn your business into a winner. And then what does the future hold? And this is the part that's exciting. Uh, harder combat zones, more skills, more monsters, more rewards, a greater variety of non-combat rooms to add the feeling of exploration. So that's all going to be based around the fighting stuff. But our next update finally brings having children into the game as well as an overhauled cooking system. Oh, I'm so excited for that part! <laughs> All right, so once we've loaded into the game, I realized that uh, I probably can't do it on this save because uh, you can't go into Simple Wood as a child, I don't think. We also experienced a bug. The jar next to me on the floor there has many like sleeping Zs, so it's the sleeping jar next to me. So I, I went ahead and reported that bug. <laughs> All right, so then once we've loaded into uh, the other save where we're an adult, we look over the actual change log. So we'll be looking through that. So combat completely redone into a reactive real-time combat system, which I was very interested to check out. Fight against five enemy types with multiple abilities to figure out. Equipped a loadout of two swords, a ward, or charm and 10 combat items and a meal. Choose your strategy carefully when death can cost you a fair weather tax years of your life, which was the case before. Hopefully now I'll be able to uh, keep my lives a little better because I was very bad at the original fighting. Uh, you could take your dog into battle for help, which I'd rather not do because I don't want them to die. Pick combat items uh, in paused mode to aid in attack, defense, and healing. Uh, traveling deeper into the forest for tougher uh, baddies with better rewards. And some areas allow for rest and little mini games for additional loot. And then some of the good store stuff. Uh, the selling table reused for storage when player owned. This will be placed out automatically every hour in opening hours if you have a worker. I don't really know what that means, <laughs> I'll be honest. Uh, you can now Order some stock for the goods store. Shop reputation levels reworked, uh, or leveling. Shop perk points unlocked as reputation goes up with 10 perks per shop. The apothecary adjusted to be easier, which I'm kind of surprised by because I didn't think it was hard in the first place. Uh, branded or off-brand results from curing all or patient partial traits. And it just ends there. I feel like there's more to that sentence that uh, is just not here. Maybe I just don't understand it. Apothecary ailment and maladies based on season along with shop reputation level, which I think is a very good detail. The apothecary crafting with no recipe now crafts combat items. Set up for blacksmith orders to be based on reputation level and also cover all available ore types, which will, it would be fun. The ledger UI has been updated and it looks so good. Uh, various level tweaks, mainly for collision. Oh, customer staff should display thinking dots when deciding their response to customers so you know when they're actually like working, not just like if they're bugged or something. Blacksmith orders collected with self-service due to a closed shop will still provide some reputation. 
Blacksmith shelf browser customers served by a worker when you have no shelf items will provide a placebo item with a similar 50-50 chance of gaining a little rep and brass or losing a little bit of rep. Ooh. Mushrooms now have proverbs, which I didn't realize they didn't before. Radishes no longer give the gassy trait, something I had not noticed. Uh, offering points are retained on leaving the goddess statue prompt to avoid exploitation. We hadn't really experienced that. Afternoon is counted from 1 to 6 to overlap dusk for an hour. So we now know afternoon times and the start of dusk. Heart root icon. Uh, size corrected in game. Don't know what heart root is. Excited to find that out someday. <laughs> Fix for dusk cherries being treated as a recipe. Can't wait to find out what a dusk cherry is. <laughs> Dust cherries and sugar plums spawn in winter as intended. Very nice. Prevented white rose and rose of romance from being requested, which I thought had already happened in the future, but maybe it didn't go through or something. Fixed for a good store, an apothecary store, where the camera would snap inside when close to the walls on the outside, which we have experienced. Tavern should still open if the player marries one of the staff. Always good. Blacksmith Apprentice Crafting can use some ore from NPC's owned store if they have any spare, one added per day. Any brass from crafting these is reduced compared to the player providing their own ore. So it's like when you're a kid, I think, and you're, you make stuff at the blacksmith. Prevented purchase of multiple recipes from the sellers in Mellow Brook, Mellow Brook Apothecary. Didn't know they had recipes. No more freebie pre-made cures if the player serves patients. We have definitely experienced that. Babies shouldn't start conversations, as they probably shouldn't. <laughs> oh, I realized there was some uh, birthdays when I checked the calendar and I had a tough time deciding if I should just ignore them or not. Could not ignore it. So we will be doing the two birthdays before we get to uh, the fighting stuff. So we gave uh, Billy his candied hair, which he really liked, but he had no gossip. We found a note on our way to Molan. A clucker is ready to lay when it sees you once per day. So we gave Molan a high starred apple for her birthday, which was our favorite. And she had some gossip, which was Sprouts Onion's birthday. I decided that instead of going straight to fighting, I wanted to stop at the shop to check the ledger. Uh, and I wanted to grab these notes. One from both Molan and from Billy. We've got a Nabai from Molan and very fancy gassy apples. While I was getting ready to go to my shop, I noticed there was a new dot on the map with a question mark on it. Um, so obviously <laughs> that became my new goal is to figure out what that was because it had not been mentioned at all in the patch notes or anything like that. Um, I thought maybe the path would be from Festfield because it's kind of where there's like three dots there. So that's where we go, I think, after going to the shop. We'll see. We went to the shop first uh, and the book looks completely different now. All the tabs are off to the side instead of taking up the whole top of the screen. There's some like new fancy headers. Then we went through each of the tabs. Some of them look nicer but close to the same. But then it's when we get to the status that looks completely different. Uh, we've got like the leveling up on the one side and then we have a bunch of traits we can unlock, which are very nice. So we have, if you are serving, NPCs may sell you ingredients. Named NPCs will provide bonus rep if they're friendly with you. The friendlier they are, the more bonus rep you will gain. Makes sense to me. Then, under Fey Worker, a rare item is added to the store cupboard overnight. The better the brownie offering you made that day, the higher the quality of the item, which I think is very cool. I'm very excited about that. And then, tier two for Fairy or Fey Worker is a branded cure is added to the stock overnight. The better the offering, the better the item. Then, we have a 25% chance to retain an ingredient during the crafting process. The quality of the retained item will be the same quality as the crafted cure. And then level two, uh, price is lowered for ordering stock. The friendlier you are with your staff, the slower their stamina will drain. And at 80% stamina or above, staff gain a boost in all stats when working. So it makes it extra nice for you to keep their stamina up. 
Uh, get a fey plant outside the shop that gives ingredients daily. I really want to see what that looks like. And then selling a five-star cure to a fair fey patient will boost the quality of the root extraction ingredient by one star with a max of five. I'm so excited. I wonder how these will vary um, between the different shops. I didn't think to check that. I only really checked the apothecary because I was too curious to go see about that new hidden area. Uh, we go to Festfield, we look at the map. There's not really any like marker indicating there's travel path. The whole top area is water. So um, kind of not surprised there wasn't a path there. So then I check out Nadia's glory. Checking Nadia's glory's map, we were able to see the question marks. And so we took the path and we went to Drown Hill start of it is kind of just a path. We found a goddess statue, which we activated. Uh, and then I'm going to explore a bit. Oh, and then I, as I was exploring, I found this pond with a little uh, target on it. I assumed that we needed to hit it, but uh, I didn't have a slingshot right away. Continue doing the path fur further, finding more map stones. And we found a tent. And then I was predicting that this is where the Master of Archer would be. <laughs> and then traveling a little further, I found said Master. I'm not sure if this is a book from before, so I'll read it. But I think there's a chance I have read through this one before. Uh, the Dark Forests of Quill are no place for the faint of heart. We all know about hobs, lobs, and knobs. We tremble at the stories told to us of wicked hags, ancient dead, and dangerous fluttering nymphs. Yet nightmares are made from the tales of the legendary monsters that dwell in the space between worlds. Children cower when parents tell them about the, the Bagon, a fearsome monster said to be 12 feet tall with skin like iron. Many a night around the fire brings hushed whispers of huge monsters in the far north with breath of fire. Some nights one might hear the distant wailing of banshees as she wants, wanders rotting ruins searching for lost souls to harvest. Nobody has seen these monsters and lived, save for the one they call Jordan, <laughs> master of combat, and he still bears the scars of his narrow escape at foul talons. So beware, dear reader, beware the moon, beware the fetid midnight ponds and pitch timeless caves, beware the depths of untrodden swamps and the blood moon shining on secret glades, for darkness treads there, and the only thing that can save you is death itself. Cheerful book, that one. <laughs> so then we talk to the master. So her name was Moon, and she says, Ah, the seedling, an honor to have you visit my quiet little corner. Welcome to the Hunter's Bluff. My name is Moon, and I am the master of archery. I have looked into the mirror and received the blessing of the goddesses. Now I am here to teach those willing to learn the grace of the hunter. I need to estimate your skill before I can give you the tool you'll need to pierce the hearts of your prey. If you can hit the target on the island to the east of the, the region, then you can return to me and claim your prize. May your inner eye guide you. So I was right about the target. Luckily I did have a slingshot and it took one shot to hit this here target. So we head back to Moon and she says, Ah, you hit the target. One day your arrows will sing through the air like a cho chorus. Every archer needs a bow, so here is yours as promised. Meet me in the borrow down the slope to the west of Drown Hill, and I will show you just how your bow can help you up your strategic options in battle. But I decided I didn't want to do that right away. Figured I should actually get some sleep first and then go to the forest. I did fill out the map. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward map. There's a bit of a path and then it'll lead to another region on the uh, right side of the map. I think at the top left is probably where we're going to have to go when we do return to talk to Moon. <laughs> I slept for eight hours, not thinking about what time it was when I went to bed, so it was very early when I woke up. I thought about like hanging out at the farm, but I decided just to head kind of straight to the forest. And uh, the master of fighting, Jorgen, Jorgen, was waiting. And he says, have you come out to batter some beasties, smash up some monsters? Not in that state, you aren't. Not seen you before, and I would feel bad if I was to let you go wandering in there and get eaten. 
I am the master of hand-to-hand -hand combat. I can teach you the basics to at least let myself feel slightly, slightly less guilty when you get yourself chomped on like a meat lollipop. <laughs> Thanks for your uh, faith in me. Meet me inside the barrow just over there to the west and let's get cracking some skulls. Bring a sword. So we uh, get lost. <laughs> Uh, I guessed this area, it was wrong, but there was stuff to look at in here. So, on guard, touche turtle away. These were terms used by the ancients and found on battered and crusty tomes depicting the noble art of stabitry. <laughs> the art was also known as hackathon, chop chop, killbilitization, and rather bizarrely, fencing. Yes, people used to hit each other with garden dividers and cattle st stoppers. To become a master of violent sports, one must re really get to grips with the parry. As a good blade runner bean knows, press. As any good blade runner bean knows, pressing left trigger or space just as an enemy is striking will deflect that attack. This also leaves them open for a counter. Simply mash the buttons like a madman to give the enemy's face a have you what have at you what not as it were. <laughs> a perfect parry and a good counter cost no stamina, so it is perfect for those of skill who want to watch their energy. Learn these methods well, and you too can become an elegant dancer of in a disco of blood. <laughs> I have no idea what a disco is, but it sounds like something you would throw through someone's skull. Quite the imagery that. Oh, and we found a proverb. Barley is the root of beer. I drank too much, so I'm not here. Oof. I tried using the thatter way after pinning the quest because I was lost, but it just said I was already on the level, so I just needed to use my eyeballs. <laughs> but I found it. Uh, and then we see the battle system here, and we talked to him, and he says, Ready to learn the fine art of clobbering. Then let's get cracking some ribs. Right, let's get cracking with the knacking. As you can see, there are you have three positions you can move to. Each move depletes your stamina a tad. Combat is all about uh, stamina. Your stamina is also shown below your feet. Try moving up and down with the left stick or with W or S keys. So we got to test out move in between them. And you can see there's the blue dots under us, and as we move it takes out one of them. Great. Use that to dodge incoming attacks. Now clobbering. See those dummies? Either click on one with your cursor or use the Y. X or A buttons for the corresponding enemy positions. You can't directly attack the support at the back, so you need to to remove all of the enemies first to bring them forward in range of your sword. Try whacking a few dummies, but watch your stamina. Each hit costs one section of stamina. And remember this, you can only attack along your lane or diagonally. Or adjacent. <laughs> so from the middle position you can attack top and bottom too, but if the top or bottom you can only reach the middle position or the lane you're on. So now we're testing out getting them. Nicely done. Now let's have add some obstacles. Enemies can place down things on what we call nodes to hurt or hinder you. These are in the positions bet halfway between you and the monsters. Some can smash, but others you can evade by attacking diagonally. Try smashing these dummies and avoiding the obstacles. And if you attack, uh, so attacking diagonally works, but attacking directly at it, you just hit the rock. Nice, you can use items too. Press B on the gamepad or E on the keyboard. Click on the target to use the item or use the left stick to highlight the target. Press A to use. Items can be used on yourself, nodes, or be thrown directly at the enemy. I have given you a selection, so try to use them all now. So hitting E, we've got some tough skin powder, a bee jar, and a stink bomb. So we use the tough skin potion on us, and then we test out the bee char jar. Just toss it on the middle guy there. And 
but it didn't seem to be doing any damage, so I don't really know what that does. And then the stink bomb is something you use in the middle. So I just threw it on one of them. That's the way, eh? Now let's teach you some defense. You can block attacks with left trigger or space. Meet Bob the Hob. He's very well trained and won't hurt you, but try to block his attacks. You can see when he will be able to do an action with that little bar under his health bar. Which is the little bar underneath him. It's not as confusing as I've made it sound. So the green one is a health bar and the blue one is his attack bar. So he's attacking and then I was testing out the space. You can hold it. It doesn't take stamina, but it does take stamina when he hits. That's the stuff. Uh, however, a monster has a higher strength than your toughness, they will chip damage you through your your block. So either toughen, toughen up or be careful and watch your health at the top left. Some items can heal you a tad and in the forests there are campfires that you can use to heal up. That's the basics done and I will teach you about timing your hits so that you can do extra ones in amazing combos, but you can learn that yourself. Now let's test you out on Bob, Grob, and Timothy. If you can get me a tooth from one of them, I'll teach you a trick. So we start out tack in the middle. Takes two hits. I did not block well. They threw a bomb on me so I ran away. I keep trying to block with the but wrong button. I kept trying to block with the right trigger or the uh, right left click instead of using space. So that was an example with the flurry that he was able to break through my block by stabbing a bunch. It took stamina. But we got him. Novice level achieved. Damage up one. And we got a hot we got a hop tooth. A knockout. You knocked at his tooth right out. As promised, here's a trick that will save your skin. Should you be good enough to pull it off under pressure. It's called parry. All you have to do is time your block as the enemy is swinging at you. If you do it right, then they will be stunned for a moment and you won't lose stamina and can counter quickly. Parry can also knock back projectiles, so if anyone checks something at you, uh, hoy it back at them. You can try that out for yourself when you're fighting. Learn to read the baddies attacks tells. Good luck out there and come see me at my house in Rivermore if you want to learn more skills. After that was done, I decided I should probably head back to the house because I do know that these episodes that read a lot uh, are long. <laughs> so that was the first look into the battling system. We didn't really get to go into the forest and we didn't go into the archery stuff, but there was just a lot to this update. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. Sorry that it was a little different than usual because of the whole audio being a problem thing. <laughs> I wish there was some kind of indication when something's not working right, but there's just no way to tell that after 30 episodes, this one doesn't work for some reason. <laughs> um, but we got to read through the patch notes, we went and checked out Moon, and we got to test out a bit of the fighting, even though it wasn't in the forest itself. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode, and until next time, I hope you have a wonderful day.